gather here in solemn place to remember the life and mourn the death of our loved ones. We ask that you comfort each family member and friend, that they turn to you word of comfort, encourage through happy memory and purpose in their heart. Thank you. Amen. 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 solemn note that betokened the dissolution of this earthly tabernacle has again alarmed our outer doors and another spirit has been summoned to that land where our fathers have gone before us. Again, we are called to assemble among the habitations of the dead to behold the narrow household appointed by the living. Here around us, in that peace that the world cannot give nor take away, sleep the unnumbered dead. The gentle breeze fans their verdant coverings and they heed it not. The sunshine and the storm passed over them and they are not disturbed. Stones and letter monuments, they symbolize the affection of surviving friends. Yet no sound proceeds from the sage, yet silent and thrilling admonition. Seek ye the narrow path that leads to the straight gate of eternal life. Again, brethren, we are called upon to consider the uncertainties of human life, the immutable certainty of death, and the vanities of all human pursuits. Decrepitude and decay are written upon every living thing. The cradle and the coffin, they stand in juxtaposition to each other, and it is a melancholy truth, my brother that as soon as we begin to live, at that moment we also begin to die. It is passing strange, notwithstanding the daily mementos of mortality that may cross our path. Notwithstanding the funeral bells so often that toll in our ears and the mournful possessions that may go about our streets that we but not more seriously consider our approach to faith. We go from desire to desire. We add hope to hope, and we lay out plans of employment for many years until we are suddenly alarmed at the approach of the message of death at a moment when we least expect them, and which we will probably conclude to be the meridian of our existence. What then are the externals of human dignity? Is it the power of wealth, the dreams of ambition, the pride of intellect, or the charms of beauty? When nature had paid her just that, fix your eyes on this last sad scene and view life stripped of its ornaments and exposed in its natural meaningless and you must be persuaded of the utter emptiness of these illusions. In the grave, all fallacies are detected. All ranks are leveled and all distinctions are done away. Here the scepter of the prince and the staff of the beggar are laid side by side. While we may drop, the sympathetic tear over the grave of our deceased brother. Let us cast around his foibles, whatever they may have been. The broad mantle of Masonic charity. No withhold from his memories the commendations that his virtue may claim that our hand. Perfection on this earth has yet never been obtained. The wise as well as the best of men, 
have all gone astray. Suffer then the apologies of human nature to plead for him who can no longer plead for himself. Our present meetings and proceedings would have been in vain and useless if they failed to excite the serious reflections and strengthen the resolutions of amendment. Be then persuaded, my brothers, by this example of the uncertainties of human life and the unsubstantial nature in all of its pursuits and no longer postpone the all-important concern of preparing for eternity. Let each of us embrace the present moment while time and opportunity permits and prepare with care for that great change that we all know must come. And when the pleasures of the world may cease to delight and become as poison unto our lips, and while we may enjoy the happy reflections of a well-spent life and wish the exercise of piety and virtue will yield the only comfort and consolation. Thus shall our hope be not frustrated, nor we hurried up a pad unto the presence of the all-wise and powerful judge in whom the secrets of all hearts are known. Let us resolve to maintain with sincerity the dignified character of our profession. May our faith be evinced in the correct moral walk and deportment. May our hope be as bright and glorious as the mysteries that will be revealed hereafter, and our charity <coughs> as boundless as the warmth of our fellow creatures. Having faithfully fulfilled the great duties that we owe to God. To our neighbors and to ourselves. When at last it shall please the grand master of the universe to summon us and to his eternal presence. May the trustable of our whole life pass such inspection that it may be given to each of us to eat of the hidden mammal and to receive the white stone with our new name that will ensure the perpetual and speakable happiness at his right hand. The lamb skin or the white apron is the emblem of innocence and the badge of a mason. It is more ancient than the golden fleece and Roman eagle when worthily worn, more autumn than the star and god. This emblem. And now deposit onto the grave of our deceased brother. By it, we are reminded of the universal dominion of death. The arm of friendship cannot interpose or prevent his coming. The wealth of the world cannot purchase our release. Nor will the youth of innocence and the charm of beauty perpetuate his coming. The matter, the cough, and the melancholy grave admonishes us of our mortality and that sooner or later these frail bodies to avow us shall mold us and to the parent dust. This evergreen, which once marked the temporary resting place of our illustrious dead, is the emblem of our faith 
and the immortalities of our souls. By it, we're reminded of the immortal part within each of us that shall survive the grave and that shall never, never, never die. By it, we're reminded that though, like our brother, who remains lies before us, we too shall be clothed in the abilities of death and deposited into the silent tomb. Yet, through our belief and the mercy of God, we can confidently hope that our souls will bloom into the eternal spring. This too, I deposit onto the grave. With the exclamation, alas, my brother. And to the grave, we can side the body of our deceased brother. We cherish his memory here. His spirit we command to God who gave. From time immoral, it has been custom among the fraternity of free and accepted masons, and at the request of a brother, to accompany his remains to the place of interment, and there to deposit them with the usual formality. In conformity with this usage, and at the request of our deceased brother, whose memory we revere and whose loss we now deplore. We have assembled in the character of Mason to offer up his memory before the world the last tribute of our affection, thereby demonstrating our sincere post esteem for him and our steady attachment to the principles of our order. The Grand Creator has been pleased out of his infinite mercy to remove our brother from the cares of the transitory existence to the state of endless duration. Thus, serving another link from the fraternal chain that binds us together. May we who survive him be more strongly cemented in the ties of union and friendship that during the short space allotted us here we may usefully and wisely employ our time. And in the reciprocal intercourse of kind and friendly acts, mutually promote the welfare and happiness of each other. We can side the body of our deceased brother. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. They are to remain till the trumpet shall sound on resurrection morn. We can cheerfully leave him in the hands of a being who's done all things well, who is glorious and holy. Fearful and praise, doing wonders <clears throat> to those of his immediate relatives and friends who is most heartstruck at the loss we have all sustained. We have but little of this world consolation to offer. We can only That he who tempers the wind to the shore and land looks down with infinite compassion among the widow and the fatherless in their hour of desolation. And the grand creator will fold his arms of love and protection around those. Who put their trust. Then let us improve.
approve this silent warning. Then they laugh. When the sheet of dead are stirred. When the great white throne is set. We receive from the ammunition judge the thrilling invitation. Come, ye blessed, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. From dust we came, and dust we shall return. May we all be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. This concludes the burial ceremony. This ends the celebration of life, this part of the celebration of life for Mr. Henderson. And again, I just want to thank all of you, especially those of you who endure these elements to 